No one should get this math problem wrong if they have basic math skills because there's a lot of different ways you can do this problem and we're going to do this problem without a calculator. So let's take a look at the question. We have 64 to the third power or 64 cubed divided by eight to the fourth power. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna walk through the complete solution steps. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you multiple different ways to do this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have a math problem here and uh, you don't need a calculator, all right? So there's different ways you can approach this problem. Of course, uh, the more math you know, uh, the easier this will be. But we have 64 cubed or 64 to the third power divided by eight to the fourth power. All right, so let's take a look at the solution steps right now. Okay, so here is our problem. We have 64 to the third power divided by eight to the fourth power. So what do we need to be thinking about in order to solve this problem? Well, the first thing we need to consider is that there's actually a couple of things going on here. We have division and we also have some powers going on. So we need to uh, figure out what comes first in terms of uh, what do we do? Do we take 64 divided by eight? You know, like what is the correct order to do this problem? Well, that's where this lovely saying right here comes in. This is PEMDAS. This is more or less our checklist uh, to figure out the proper order of, uh, of order of operations in mathematics. So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers, these things are have to be done in a particular order. And this little saying right here, PEMDAS, uh, is our checklist, and it's a checklist that goes from left to right. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly review this, but before I get into what uh, these letters uh, mean in this particular acronym, there's kind of a cute saying that goes along with this. It's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally uh, did, but you know what? We thank her for her cool little phrase anyways. Okay, so just a quick review of PEMDAS. Uh, again, this is basic mathematics. Everyone uh, should know this, but P stands for uh, parentheses. So if you, see, if you see things in parentheses or brackets or these type of brackets uh, like this, these are what we call grouping symbols in mathematics. They're going to start there. Now I can kind of uh, give you a more detailed explanation of the order of operations, but here's the thing, if you want to learn more or practice the order of operations, there's a lot more uh, complicated, interesting problems than this one right here. But nevertheless, we need to consider the order of operations. So P is the first thing. Of course, in this particular problem, we don't have uh, parentheses. So E is our next thing, and that uh, is basically powers. So when we're dealing with things like two to the third power, this little three up here is called the exponent. Okay, this uh, number indicates the exponent. The two is what we call the base, and the entire thing is a power. Okay, so this E really kind of stands for exponents, but it means, hey, do powers. Now, of course, we do um, have powers here, so obviously this is gonna be part of our checklist. Okay, so M, D, A, and S. M stands for multiplication. D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S uh, stands for subtraction. And most uh, students, or many students, think that, oh, I have to do this in this particular order, always multiplication, then division, then addition and subtraction. That's actually not the way this part of the checklist works. What we have to do is consider M and D and A and S as groups. So we're gonna do multiplication or division, whatever we see from um, first from left to right. So if we see multiplication, then division, we're going to do it this way. If we see division first, then multiplication, we'll do it this way. Same thing for addition and subtraction. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to kind of really understand is the order of operations and, of course, uh, a basic understanding of powers and exponents. So let's go ahead and get into the next step now and uh, think about what 64 cubed divided by 8 to the 4th power is and think about what do we need to do first, okay, using our little PEM, PEMDAS checklist 
we're going to have to take care of the powers, right? So let me kind of erase this so we can kind of focus in. So when you're doing any kind of number operations or order of operations problem in math, you have to keep that PEMDAS in mind. You're like, right, I can't do division yet because in the PEMDAS, I have PE. I'm going to have to take care of these exponents. So effectively, we'll have to do this and this, and then whatever the answers are, we will divide lastly. But there's another uh, very good way to approach this problem, and that is to kind of consider it as a fraction. In other words, we have 64 cubed divided by 8 uh, to the fourth power. I could rewrite this problem as a fraction, and that is really kind of the best way to go. So 64 cubed is our numerator, and that is being divided by, okay, that division sign is the same thing as this fraction bar, and of course we have down here 8 uh, to the fourth power. And uh, this is a very, very good way to look at this problem. Matter of fact, it's the easiest way for sure. So anytime you have division, uh, you know, it's not a bad idea to think of that division problem as a fraction. And that's what I'm going to do here. We have 64 to the third power being divided by 8, eight to the fourth power. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and think about what does it mean to have 64 to the third power and 8 to the fourth power. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so 64 to the third power means take 64 right, and multiply it by itself three times. So one, two, three, this is 64 to the third power. Again, 64 being multiplied by third uh, by itself three times. So the exponent is the number of time you're, gonna, you're going to multiply that number by itself. And of course we have eight to the fourth power, so we're gonna take eight and multiply it by itself uh, four times. Okay, so hopefully a lot of you are like, um, oh, maybe I kind of see where this guy is going. So what do you think is going to be the next step in this particular prom? Well, if you um, weren't able to get the prom, you should maybe pause the video and think about what I'm going to do next because this is going to be very, very easy. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so right here is the kind of our setup, right? We talked about how we could write this problem 64 cubed divided by eight to the fourth as a fraction. And now we can think of this problem as 64 times 64 times 64. And now we have eight times eight times eight times eight. But what we wanna do, if possible, is try to find like factors. See, 64 and 64, these are factors, okay, one big product. Of course, I can go into my calculator or just do this by hand and get the product of all these uh, 64s being multiplied together. That's a lot of work. We don't want to do that, but what we want to do is see if we can construct a 64. Now, another thing you could do is take these 64s up here and be like, you know what? I know 64 is the same thing as eight times eight, right? So we can just kind of look at this problem like this as a bunch of eights, but why do that when we have eight times eight and times eight times eight, because eight times eight is 64, and then this eight times eight is 64 as well. The idea is to get the same numbers in the numerator as in the denominator. This is very, very important when it comes to fractions, and this is how you simplify. Okay, so, when you simplify a fraction, let's take a fraction like uh, 10 over 20. Okay, we all should know that that is equal to 1 half. But why is that equal to 1 half? Well, 10 over 20, if we look at the factors, this 10 is uh, 1 times 10, and 20 is 2 times 10. We can cross-cancel these like factors. It's the same number in the numerator and denominator, and we're just left with the 1 half, and that is the idea here. Okay, of course, we have... Uh, uh, 64s all over the place. We can cross cancel. Um, a lot of these 64s are actually two pairs or two, two and two. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So here we have 64 times 64 times 64 over 64 times 64. We can cross cancel 164 to 164, okay? Not one, it's not one to two, it's one to one. So if I have a 64 here, it can take out 164 over here. I have another 64, so it can take out another one up here. And that leaves me with simply a 64 over one or just 64, which of course is our answer. All right, so hopefully most of you took this path. And uh, even if you, um, back over here, if you looked at this problem as a bunch of eights, you know, oh, this is eight times eight, times eight, times eight, uh, times eight, times eight, on boom, boom, boom. You could have done that. It's just, you know, more work and unnecessary. You always uh, want to try to uh, find the biggest factors so you don't have to factor so much. But this is kind of the main idea to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. Now, I'm going to show you a completely different way to approach this problem a little bit more um, interesting, especially for those of you that need to learn more advanced math like uh, algebra. Okay, so here is another approach. And uh, if you took this approach, that is fantastic. But uh, this one's a little, bit, uh, a little bit more work, but it's one that you should be aware of how to do. Okay, so 64, all right? We couldn't think of 64 to the third power is the same thing as 2 to the 6 to the uh, to the third power. See, 2 to the 6 is, in fact, 64. Okay, so 64 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So here we have 2 times 2, which, of course, is 2, and this is 8. To, uh, this is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 to, right over here times 2 is 8. So a little bit of a tongue twister here. So 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, So it's really kind of a good idea to try to express big uh, a base in mathematics. Okay, this again, this is the base of a power as a power, uh, power itself, especially when you have two different numbers. Because if we can rewrite 64 and 8 with the same base, then this problem uh, becomes quite easy to do. All right, so 64 to the third power, we can think of that, think of that as 2 to the 6 to the third power, and 8 to the fourth power. 8 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 2 cubed to the fourth power. Okay, so I'm going to be using some um, basic properties of powers and exponents. These are things that you absolutely need to know, especially uh, if you plan on being successful in algebra. But what we can do here now, 2 to the 6th to the 3rd power, there is a rule when we um, work with powers and exponents. When we take a power to an outside power or an outside exponent, we could just simply multiply this outside exponent to the inside exponent. So 2 to the 6th to the 3rd power is the same thing as 2 to the 18th power. So if that's the case, we have 2 to the 3rd power we take that 4, multiply by 3, that is going to be 2 to the 12th. Okay, so what does this mean here? Well, it means we have uh, 18 twos up here, right? We can just write this out all day. 18 over here, and we're dividing by 12 twos. We can, do, we can just kind of expand all this out, but that's not necessary but can we, because we can use another uh, property of powers and exponents, and that is the division of powers. So you could divide two powers if those powers have the same base. Then what we can do is subtract when we're dividing in this manner. We can subtract the exponents. And it's going to be the numerator exponent, and then we're going to subtract away the denominator exponent like so. So this is going to be 2 to the 18 minus 12th, or uh, 2 to the 18 minus 12, which, of course, is 6, or 2 to the 6, which, of course, we already know is 64. Now, a lot of you might uh, say, wow, that was interesting, but this is definitely the long way to do this problem. And uh, I would agree. However, I did this problem um, using powers and exponents just to kind of demonstrate some of the stuff that you're definitely going to have to do uh, in algebra. Okay, Oftentimes, you'll do a problem like this, it's, but instead of numbers, you'll have variable expressions, right? You'll have things like this. And so you're not going to just be able to use numeric factors. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 
or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.